Now, here's another myth that we definitely need to have to must talk about. If you exercise enough, you can actually out-exercise a poor diet. You probably heard that one before, right? Now, some people take pills and medicines as a way to avoid changing how they eat. Other people look to exercise as a way to avoid how they eat, okay? And there's plenty of advocates who say that as long as you exercise enough, you can effectively eat whatever you want. Is that true? Well, let's find out. Now, studies have demonstrated that calorie restriction can substantially reduce your LDL cholesterol and your triglycerides and directly improve the function of your heart muscle. And that calorie restriction is as effective as exercise. So you can see on the screen here, uh, research that was performed by John Halsey and his, uh, his research team at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri, just some of the best exercise physiologists on the planet, have discovered that when they, uh, cr when they performed a study, which was a one-year randomized control trial in middle-aged, lean, and overweight men and women, what they did was they tried to evaluate the effect of a body fat reduction either by number one, increasing energy expenditure by 20% through exercise or by number two, decreasing energy expenditure uh, by initiating calorie restriction. So the question is, what's more powerful? 20% reduction in calorie intake or a 20% increase in energy expenditure? They suspected that the 20% reduction in energy intake would be less powerful than the 20% increase in uh, energy expenditure. In other words, they predicted that exercise would be more powerful. And what they actually found was that a 12 month negative energy balance achieved through calorie restriction was about equivalent to the exercise improvements in improving cardiovascular disease risk factors. In other words, reducing calories by 20% is equivalent to increasing calorie expenditure by 20%. So you think it would make sense that if you just increase your calorie expenditure by 20%, then it's going to benefit your cardiovascular health. Like I don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist in order to figure that one. Okay. But I want you to take a look at the actual numbers because the numbers matter. And this is where there's a little bit of a, a disconnect in most people's head. Okay. The average Ironman triathlete burns somewhere between call it 600, maybe a thousand calories per hour on race day. Okay. So if you're an Ironman triathlete, if you are well-trained, if you are highly efficient at running and biking and swimming, and if you have been training for a significant period of time, you can expect that every single hour that you are in the middle of a race, that you're going to be burning somewhere between 600 and 1,000 calories. Now, Ironman triathletes, I don't know if you've ever done an, uh, a triathlon before, but it's a lot of work. It's a ton of work. Your heart rate is significantly elevated. You're sweating. You're moving really fast. You're your rate of breathing is extremely high and it is not easy to perform, okay? Now, if you just went to McDonald's or you went to your favorite fast food restaurant and you'd order one bucket of large fries and you ate that in about six minutes, okay? You can completely wipe out the benefit of one hour of intense exercise from Ironman training, Okay. Another thing you could do is just eat a couple of scoops of ice cream and almost the entire day of exercise is wiped out. Well, maybe not the entire day, but multiple hours of exercise can be wiped out by eating just a little bit of ice cream because that little bit of ice cream can easily pack on the calories. In other words, a little consumption of calorie rich foods, whether they come from the animal world or whether they come from refined and packaged products or whether they come from dairy products can substitute for a lot of exercise. It's a lot harder to reduce your calorie intake via exercise than it is to put that same amount of calories on by simply eating something small. Okay. Exercise is important. Don't get me wrong. I exercise every single day. I love exercise and I will continue to exercise as long as my body will allow me to exercise. But what I'm trying to drive home here is I want you to understand that exercise is important, but navigating your diet using a calorie density approach is going to be more effective for you in the long term because it's not necessarily about moving your body more. It's about reducing your calorie intake from foods that are lower in calorie density. And when you do it, you can actually watch the pounds fall off of you very easily. We're talking about one 
to two pounds of weight loss per week, which may not sound like a lot, but one to two pounds of weight loss per week over the course of a three month period can be anywhere from 12 to 24 pounds of weight loss. And if you were to take off 12 to 24 pounds of weight in you know a three month period, tell me, would you be happy? Would you be excited about that? I think most people would say yes. Okay. The truth is that most people don't burn 600 to 800 calories from physical exercise, as we talked about in this previous example, in one hour, much less are people burning 600 to 800 calories in a full day. Okay. 600 to 800 calories of exercise is a significant energy expenditure. And it's easy to put that amount of calories on by simply just having a couple of bites of this or having one bucket of fries or having something that looks tantalizing, even though numerically you may not understand the impact that it actually has from a caloric perspective. Okay. So a simple way to think about this is that you can start to begin to understand why it's very hard to out exercise your diet, but it's very easy to out eat your exercise. I'll say that again. It's very hard to out exercise your diet, but it is very easy to out eat your exercise. And I want you to really understand this because the proportion of energy expenditure that comes from exercise and non-exercise activity thermogenesis in green and in blue on the screen is small in comparison to your total energy expenditure. So you got to work real hard in order to burn just a small number of calories, but you can take on calories at a much faster rate and you can do it without even knowing it. And as a result of that, you can end up asking yourself, well, how come I'm not losing weight? I'm exercising a lot. How come this isn't working? And the answer is because you're also eating foods that are high in the calorie density scale. And the combination of the two effectively wipes out your energy expenditure and makes it so that you get frustrated. So like I said earlier, exercise is great. Don't get me wrong. I would strongly recommend incorporating movement into your daily regimen and being very consistent about it today, tomorrow, and for many years into the future. Highly, highly recommend it. You can see in the research, okay? Exercise is one of the most powerful drugs ever invented. It's one of the most powerful medications. And the, the research world and the pharmaceutical world would love to develop a drug that is even half as powerful as exercise because exercise has been shown to regulate immune function. Exercise can help reduce body weight and fight against obesity. Exercise can improve cardiovascular health. And exercise can significantly improve your mood, your cognition, which is how your brain functions, your neurophysiology, which is how nerves in your peripheral nervous system and central nervous system function, and can actually help stimulate neurochemical pathways. These are all good things. You want all of this stuff, okay? In addition to that, exercise can also maybe even potentially add years to your life, okay? This is a, this is a controversial topic, but the idea here is that when you have reduced chronic disease risk, and you're able to use your body more frequently, you're able to potentially stay on this planet for a longer period of time. Okay. But unless you're training for a triathlon, you are probably not going to out exercise your diet. It's really hard to do that. And it requires a lot of time training. And unless you're training for multiple hours per day, I don't want you to get used to the idea that just simply going for a run for 30 minutes is going to help you out exercise a poor diet. Cause that's not the case. And if you are training for a triathlon, then you probably don't want to be eating cheeseburgers and French fries all the time because they're probably not the most beneficial nutrient dense foods that are going to help you power your next training. Okay. So here's my simple advice. Don't try to out exercise a poor diet. Okay. It's very hard to make that work. In fact, I would almost say it's impossible to make that work. It's a lot easier to make small strategic, important changes to your food intake and of course, if you do it that way, like I'm suggesting by eating more green light foods and reducing your total calorie density, then you can significantly improve many aspects of your overall health and your athleticism simultaneously. Okay. The truth is that it can become very, very, very hard to exercise more and more and more and more over the course of time. Because if you perform exercise for half an hour today and then 45 minutes tomorrow, and then two hours the next day, and then four hours the next day, at a certain point, you're like, I can't do this anymore. Like I can't actually perform more exercise because my body is sore. My connective tissue is sore. My muscles are asking me to slow down and you basically can hit a physical wall. Otherwise you get injured. Okay. So don't rely on just increasing your exercise expenditure as a way to control your body weight or, or improve your metabolic health because it's likely to not happen. Okay. So all you have to do is just 
change the foods that you're eating. Or if you're already eating a, a plant-based diet or you're eating a nutrient-dense diet, then just eat more of those foods, okay? Those are the types of strategies that are actually quite simple. And when you do it that way, your body is going to thank you because you're going to know it, you're going to feel it, and it's going to change everything about you. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full-length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero-commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.